Shavnam Diaries Podcast Hare Krishna, we are continuing to read Bhagavad Gita as it is, the book by His Divine Grace, Abhay Charanara Vinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Chapter 17, Divisions of Faith. Text 7 Aharastva pisarvasya trividho bhavati priya yagyastha pastatha danam tesham bhedam mimam shrinu Even the food each person prefers is of three kinds according to the three modes of material nature. The same is true of sacrifices, austerities and charity. Now, hear of the distinctions between them. Purport. In terms of different situations in the modes of material nature, there are differences in the manner of eating and performing sacrifices, austerities and charities. They are not all conducted on the same level. Those who can understand analytically what kind of performances are in what modes of material nature are actually wise. Those who consider all kinds of sacrifice or food or charity to be the same cannot discriminate and they are foolish. There are missionary workers who advocate that one can do whatever he likes and attain perfection. Ha! This is Yatamat Tatapat. You can do whatever you want and you will become perfect. That's the philosophy. But these foolish guides are not acting according to the direction of the scripture. They are manufacturing ways and misleading the people in general. Okay. This is like really like I really like this topic because I made so many mistakes in this regard. That you know like you have to discriminate (laughs) and not everything is like you know uh, one. Actually this is also something my husband keeps telling me. Not all is one. So, this ability to discriminate is something we learn in uh, spiritual association, in uh, studying of the scriptures, and this is what actually makes us focused and makes sure that we stay on the right path. Okay, text 8. Ayu sattva balarogya sukha priti vivardhana Rasya snigdha sthira hridya ahara sattvika priya Foods dear to those in the mode of goodness increase the duration of life, purify one's existence and give strength, health, happiness and satisfaction. Such foods are juicy, fatty, wholesome, and pleasing to the heart. Katva malasa lavanna tushna. Okay, one sec. Katvam la lavanna tushna. Tikshna ruksha vidahina. Ahara rajasa siesta. Tiguvinda. Dukka shoka maya prada. Foods that are too bitter, too sour, salty, hot, pungent, dry and burning are dear to those in the mode of passion. Such foods cause distress, misery and disease. Mm-hmm. Text 10 Yata yamam gata rasam puti paryushitam chayat Uchishtam apicha medyam, bhojanam tamasapriyam. Foods prepared more than three hours before being eaten. Foods that is tasteless, decomposed, and putrid. And food consisting of remnants and untouchable things is dear to those in the mode of darkness. Purport. The purpose of food is to increase the duration of life, purify the mind, 
and aid bodily strength. This is its only purpose. In the past, great authority selected those foods that best aid health and increase life, life's duration, such as milk products, sugar, rice, wheat, fruits and vegetables. Yes, we did mention sugar. These foods are very dear to those in the mode of goodness. Hmm? Let's repeat the list. Milk products, sugar, rice, wheat, fruits and vegetables. These foods are very dear to those in the mode of goodness. Some other foods, such as baked corn and molasses, while not very palatable in themselves, can be made pleasant when mixed with milk or other foods. They are then in the mode of goodness. All these foods are pure by nature. They are quite distinct from untouchable things like meat and liquor. Fatty foods, as mentioned in the 8th verse, have no connection with animal fat obtained by slaughter. Animal fat is available in the form of milk, which is the most wonderful of all foods. Milk, butter, cheese and similar products give animal fat in a form which rules out any need for the killing of innocent creatures. It is only through brute mentality that this killing goes on. The civilized method of obtaining, obtaining needed fat is by milk. Slaughter is the way of subhumans. Protein is amply available through split peas, dal, whole wheat, etc. Now, milk is such a big topic right now, right? Because now nowadays veganism is very much prominent, or it's gaining popularity, you can say, and they boycott, or they, they, um, how do you call it, they don't eat, they reject milk products. Now, one of the things that my husband, like, I think it's the biggest argument against it, is that, you know, like, cows are not wild animals. There is no wild cow. So this, like, the modern people, they don't understand that. The modern civilization, you can say, that they just don't realize that uh, the cows, because in the Shastras it's this explained that cows were created along with um, Okay, I will not speculate in that regard, I don't remember exact verse, but uh, as we know in the Vaikuntha, in Galoka Vrindavana, originally Krishna is a cowherd boy, he takes cows to the grazing, and this whole culture of cow protection, basically coming from the Vedic civilization, and the cow is worshipped, it's honored, it's loved, they're, they're loved, they're um, part of family, they're never slaughtered, they're taken care of, and uh, you can glorify cows like in a like we can spend weeks <laughs> just uh, talking about the glories of cows. So, and this topic, um, I mean, I'm very glad that there are people who are becoming vegetarians in the sense that vegans includes vegetarianism but excludes cows. So that's not oh. Somebody is drilling something. Okay, so this is something to be... And of course, we want uh, to organize protected, nicely um, arranged goshalas. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is... This is that. Continuing. Food, foods in the mode of passion, which are bitter, too salty or too hot, or overly mixed with red pepper, cause misery by reducing the mucus in the stomach, leading to disease. Foods in the mode of ignorance or darkness are essentially those that are not fresh. Any food cooked more than three hours before it is eaten, except prasadam, 
food offer to the Lord, is considered to be in the mode of darkness. Because they are decomposing, such foods give a bad odor, which often attracts people in this mode, but repulses those in the mode of goodness. Yes. Remnants of food may be eaten only when they are part of a meal that was first offered to the Supreme Lord or first eaten by saintly persons, especially the spiritual master. Otherwise, the remnants of food are considered to be in the mode of darkness and they increase infection or disease. Such foodstuffs, although very palatable to persons in the mode of darkness, are neither liked nor even touched by those in the mode of goodness. The best food is the remnants of what is offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Lord says that he accepts preparations of vegetables, flour and milk when offered with devotion. Patram pushpam palam toyam. Of course, devotion and love are the chief things which the Supreme Personality of Godhead accepts. But it is also mentioned that the prasadam should be prepared in a particular way. Any food prepared by the injunctions of the scripture and offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead can be taken even if prepared long, long ago, because such food is transcendental. Therefore, to make food antiseptic, edible, and palatable for all persons, one should offer food to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Haribo! Thank you so much for tuning in today. The book links, previous episodes, timeline, and biography of the author can be found on shravanamdiaries.com. The link is in the description, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna, hare Krishna.